Staten Island. It's where I grew up. It's where I got this silly accent. Thousands of breadwinners commute from here to jobs in the city every day. My father has never been one of them. get along on a crust of bread and be engaged in some occupation that you like to do, this crust of bread is a feast. But if you're, if you're involved with something that you detest and you, you sit down to the biggest meal, you, you choke on it because you know the next moment is going to bring the misery. But if you know the next moment where you're going to be involved in something that satisfies you, you're not concerned about body sustenance anymore. You're concerned about what dream you have. His name is Murray, Murray Braverman, and he's been running this shop called Marita Cycles this way for over 30 years. When he was kids, he rides on a bike with his kids. He puts a little seat, him and his wife, and they, they ride all along. Well, we no car. Ride with the girl no car, right. Yeah, oh, yes. And the kids behind him with legs. the bicycle. <laughs> Isn't that something? Out of all those years. Shows a lot of promise with Moretta up there. Fine imported cycle. Boy, worst thing in it. Bicycle repaired. Well, what happened since then? Place has turned into a dump. It's you good know, then, though. It's turned into a dump. What? No, it's good then. That's a, hey, that's a good road to wreck. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of promise. Everything turns out pretty good. The sun still shines. The days come and go. The shop can no longer accommodate Murray's constantly growing inventory, so new acquisitions wind up in a house two miles away. What follows a junk run is what we call a worship service. for computer tapes. That's uh, something that could really be used. Well, for more junk? Not necessarily. Tremendously good. Looks like the same old shit, if you ask me. Well, I usually don't like to ask too many people. I'd like to ask myself, and if I have a good reply, that's all I'm interested in. Now, I'll turn this thing here. 
And it's very good the way these covers come off. You can use this for all kinds of parts. And uh, when you put the parts in, you can put them right in like this any which way because this is tied on. It's solid. And you could put the parts in and store them that way. Here is uh, shelf and lining paper. That's always handy. Here you have your uh, cubes. We're making your cubes for small cubes. You don't want those big ones where you choke on them. This is your uh, paint mixing stick. Here's a lot of miscellaneous tools. It's, it's always a goodie there. Here's a couple of books, which is always good for self edifications. Here's the, uh, some numbers in case you're putting up screens, which you don't do anymore. Here's your doorbell. All you need is the house to go with it. Here's a very good find. This is a scissor made in Germany of a high-quality steel. This needs a slight repair, a little sharpening. Yeah, it is a beauty. That's a, a switch plate and a mother of pearl motif. Perfect goodies. Another box of perfect goodies. There used to be seven of us in our house. But as we moved out, the goodies moved in. Murray's Fort Knox. If you went into a cave and there was gold in there, and let's say that, of course, gold is not that plentiful where it just as there's a sign on it, you pick it up. It's like in the form of dust. Or once in a while, you strike a rich one with, with nuggets. But if, if you would invite your friends into the cave, say, what the hell are you living in this cave for? You know, it's dark and it's damp. Well, you say, there's gold. And they says, well, why don't you just take the gold out and leave the cave? Well, all right. But he says, I don't need all the gold at once. I just put, pick a nugget out. I use it to exist, to, to buy my food, or to buy my clothes. And, and this is what it says. These items are, uh, are items of, um, like old nuggets. The kitchen is the last room somewhat free of gold nuggets. Things were different 10 years ago before my mother died. Now, your mother and myself. Now, here's an extreme, like an independent, practical person and a dreaming, highly impractical person. You have, you have opposites. Now, if you put those two notes together, you could get a tremendous harmony. The offspring can take the order from both. In other words, it can take the best of the two worlds and make something out of it. Are you making movies now? Are you out of your mind? Introducing my sister Lola. My sister What's thinks making it? movies about the family, family is sick. Exposed right? personal problems? Ridicule the family? It's sick! I can't even, I've never heard anything that's sick in my life. When I was 18 years old, there's a lot of things that was denied, denied to me. But at the, during the time that I felt that I was being denied things, and this was so real at the time, I felt that I was being given a lot of things. I was blessed with a lot of things. I felt as, as much as I was denied, I was rich because I could see the struggles of both parents. And I felt that, that this struggle that they were going through, to me, that was like a love. It wasn't said in, in any kind of eloquent terms, but it certainly was there. I felt it. You don't have to keep talking just because you have a recorder on. That's Dick, Lola you again. You can't have dead air. Dead air after 30 seconds. I'd rather have dead air than hear your noise. Take now, take Lola, all right? She doesn't like what we're trying to do here. I mean, she thinks this is a waste of time. It's not making money. It's, yeah. uh, I should be out uh, making a few bucks someplace. You've had a big influence on my life. And I mean, right. this whole project wouldn't be, except I because you are the way you are. Whereas you've stressed the, the artistic merit of certain projects, 
Lower and Glenn, they've taken exception with with this, I mean, to a violent extent. On the other hand, I can see their point, and the point is, I mean, it's pretty hard to live with all this crap, you know? I mean, well, the door opens two ways, I always say that. I'm not know. saying, I'm not talking about the door opening two ways. I mean, it's, uh, I mean, we don't have a choice, I mean... You have a choice. You have your own wings. Ways. Everybody has their own wings. Our Lola has her own wings. Glenn has his own wings. Whatever you want to turn away from, you have that prerogative. We, we put that uh, metal door on there because he kept, got shot, he kept getting, shot. you know, tickets from from uh, we, just the uh, police department, fire department, fire hazards in there. He's been shot at through that door. That's uh, an old junk shop. That's what it is. He repaired bikes, but uh, he's filled right to the door with junk. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> I don't want to say nothing about that because I don't want to get in trouble with that. Well, no. For obvious reasons, I didn't want to interview the neighbors myself. But he's been there for quite a few years, too. He has. He's, yes, he's been there, and his wife is dead. He has children to support, so I wouldn't say anything against him, no. Yes, he lost his car, and I wouldn't have, no, I wouldn't say anything against him. He has to make a living, yes, and he has children to support, so I wouldn't say anything against him. Well, that's very good. No, I wouldn't. As far as you're saying that I saw your, uh, I don't know where you got that information from, but uh, you had many neighbors see. down here. You go all the way down the block, go down right. Watchard Road, and no one will say them. nothing wrong about the guy. He's known for charging a lot for just yeah. little, Ten, little, he wanted little tires about this big, cost ten dollars for one. No, he never. You have a bike? It. You have a problem with something? You bring it up, it's right. uh, fifteen, twenty dollars. Someone else will charge you. Five dollars. No, he's charge been very good for the I tell you. Here, very good, like. very good. As far as an ISO, I think uh, whoever said it. Yeah. Well, I, my honest opinion is maybe I shouldn't say, but as a maybe a jealous, uh, illiterate person, you know. Well, <clears throat> we have found a few serious violations of uh, hazardous conditions that is blocking the the aisles storing the stock too high to the ceiling. Uh, and in general, a hazardous condition for the building, the occupants involved, and for the neighbors. Uh, the building is brick. Now, even if the building should burn, it could be like a furnace. Who's it going to bother? The, the, the damn joint would burn down and uh, wouldn't hide anybody. In fact, they could have practice there. Practice how to put the fire out. where you can sit. Well, I know, but you do this day after day. Uh, this is a business, and it's not operating. Why? Well, there's all kinds of businesses. There's a business of living, and there's a business of uh, acquiring uh, capital for your responsibility. I think he's contradicting himself when he says that, because if you don't, if he doesn't, like so this morning, he was here, he needed money. He sold me some merchandise. He had to go down and pay his bills. That's where it means, it, it, it means something, don't it? If you haven't got that, you don't pay your bills, you don't have no electricity. If I need some money to pay a certain bill, I promote a certain item, and when I complete the transaction, I have that amount of cash to, to take care of that obligation. 
Yeah. What, too much for you? Huh? Well, uh, I might shave a little bit. Oh, yeah, Skycomoke, yeah. 75. It's, it's a good one. It's a Bosch and Loma. It's not that Jap crap. A hundred? Yeah, a hundred, yeah. You go buy a new one for the love of hundred. Ah, you'll probably get a new one for about 75. Yeah. Tell you what, I'll give you five bucks and I'll put it right in the car. You want to give five for this? Yeah. All right, give five for it. Come on. Let's see if you... Okay, and I'll give you 15 for this. $20, and I'll take the whole shoes match. Give me 25. Uh, I got, I got $20 on me. 25 for the two things. 25. I mean, it's not enough. Make it more than. Let me throw this in the car. What? Well, oh, first you got to pay. Oh, yeah, I got to pay for it. Yeah. You're right. I trust I'm you. I'm wrong. No, no, you're not wrong. You're, you're right. You're hasty. <laughs> Geez, you got a lot of money. If I knew you had that much, I'd charge you I'm more. I'm broke, for Christ's sake. I can't, I won't use it. I'm fucking yeah, around with my stuff in here. I mean, you don't carry too much money, would you? Give it away quick. The basic idea in business is to buy something for so much and get much more in return. In other words, it's, it's got something to do with animals. You buy cheap and you sell dear. But it isn't as simple as that. There's salesmanship involved and there's timing. There's putting up with different kind of uh, emotional problems that people might have. Because the money doesn't come from a machine, it comes from a person. If I cannot enjoy that relationship, then what the money I take will not satisfy me. All righty, let's see. What is this? Uh, oh, that's that. All right. All right, I'll put this in this uh, high-class bag. I got it, three of them in there. But that's five and 56. All right, that's six dollars. There's your bag of tubes. You. Come back again. Right. You're welcome. And I will take this money. How come you come to this place? It's not too good with the lady. It's a nice place to come and get all your parts and stuff. What do you think about this Murray fellow? <laughs> He's okay. Oh. Taking a bath. After how many years? More than I care to remember. These shoes do constitute a, quite a uh, age. They've grown part of the appendage. Oh, that's a hard shoe to get off. Oh, boy. This is a tremendous... Uh, oh, boy. Shoes are off. Put them that away. Oh, I'm taking the clothes off. Oh, oh. Uh. The pants seem to have a, a bit of an exposure. All righty. In the winter time, not not washing tends to give you more of an insulation against the cold, a bit of cold. Another benefit of procrastinating on your bathing is to take plenty of time in acquiring the necessary equipment for bathing. Which, uh, soap is a constituent there. And that way you can take your time in procuring bargains. That's, that's another thing that uh, Gives you that king-like feeling. Uh, I gotta meet the world. The world is the annual bicycle trade show. What's the name? Give me the cycle. Tell me why I can't. Mark, I don't even carry cars because that's uh, peasants carry cars. You see, what was happening, like in the younger years, I was very shy. I decided that if I would go out on my own, I would have to speak up. I used to meet different people, and I had to ask for food sometimes. 
the bicycle part of it was brought on by just that kind of philosophy. It helped me because I came out of myself. Well, Marita Cycles, there was a tremendous dream. The names are Marie and Rita. Now, they, these two names were put together for the purpose because it was initiated on the basis of a joint venture. But I remember fights, I remember throwing stuff, oh. I remember she wanted sort of a house that was relatively clean. Yeah, yeah. She didn't go too much for this kind of image that I project. I project this sloppy, disgusting, uh, no-care image. And she complained that uh, she didn't want to be seen in a, in, with me and in the house. And uh, I, I figured that why should I, my own feeling was, uh, why should I be different to somebody else that comes to a house that I, when I wouldn't be different for her? Well, look, I remember when my mother was dying and you wouldn't see her and uh, she yeah, wouldn't see yeah, you. And I yeah. mean, you were miles apart and... Uh... Yes, but the world is apart as much as people would imagine. She said, I don't want to see you coming up here to the hospital. I believe her. I believe that, and because I have enough caring for her, I stay away. I didn't stay away because I didn't want to see it. I stay away because that's what she wishes. And when you love something, you have to respond to the wishes of the one you love. Pearls of beauty in your smile, not a stone upon your head. Life is for loving now, not for when you're dead. Come to the hill where hearts are still. The silence speaks where once was will. Hear their song, a sleeping heart. On your way, the teardrops start. When it comes time to the terminal, the terminal part of her disease, of her life, she was cast off by everyone. The doctors cast her off. I had a, they had, she had to be asked, and you just picture it. She has to be asked that we're turning you over now because you're on your way out. The shades are coming down on your life, and you have to make a decision of how you're going to leave. In other words, to die with such dignity that you must not bother anybody. Nobody can love you anymore because you're dying. You're going to stink with your death. So. I see that, right? Hi, now, Jerry. the thing is that that isn't so bad. But like uh, many times, you have to listen to the screams of someone who's suffering so terribly that you, there's, you yeah, feel so frustrated and no, not being able to give any real comfort. <laughs> It's like the big blue eyes. Now, none of the family has those big blue eyes. It seemed like it ran off, but she, she took her eyes with her. And now we'll hear from our dear friend Rita. <laughs> and now, our host, Murray. <laughs> and now, sing when the big uh, virtuoso on the piano over at Marpon. Go ahead, Michael. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our
to me, it wasn't important to be a successful businessman. It was just to live every day with some kind of a satisfaction out of the day and not to live further than that. And uh, this is the way uh, Moretta Cycles is. There's nothing spectacular, there's nothing special about it, there's nothing uh, that would require a big uh, story to be made out of it, but uh, there's something there. Thank you.